Greetings fellow ukuleleans, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new tutorial. Uh, once again I'd like to go over one of the etudes in my book, uh, Finger Style Etudes for Ukulele. And I did it about three years ago. And i uh, just been remaking uh, tutorial videos on it. I had all ten of them at one time up on YouTube and I'm uh, just redoing these. I uh, have a little bit uh, of time between when I wrote the book and, and today and so maybe I can give you some additional uh, perspective on it. So that was number two, that was the second one in the book, and aptly titled. <laughs> and so the uh, idea here is that we have very easy chords, nothing up the neck, no weird time signatures, no uh, mysterious picking patterns. It's all pretty straight ahead, just kind of a pretty little tune basically. But um, here's the reason why I wrote it and what I'm hoping students will gain from it. And that's number one, uh, learning to strengthen your ring finger, getting your right hand's ring finger involved in the act. A lot of us pick only with our thumb, our index, and our middle at the most. And then uh, when it comes time to use the ring finger, a lot of people are kind of thrown off. And so there are actually two ways to do this. If you're totally against using your ring finger, you can uh, get away with P-I-P-M, which is something I call the every other pattern. And that's uh, totally possible. You can do the every other pattern on this. But if you do a more challenging way, it's P, M, I, A. It takes a little more dexterity. Um, and to be honest, I have to play it slower when I do uh, P, M, I, A. I can't reach those kind of speeds I can with my very practiced and learned uh, P, I, P, M. So there is a difference. And by the way, let me go over uh, all the mechanics there. So the original picking pattern, as you see in the book, is PMIA. And that means thumb is hitting the G string. Index finger is picking the E string. And I'm sorry, middle finger is picking the E string. I got myself confused. And then the index finger is picking the C string. And finally the ring finger A is picking the uh, A string appropriately enough so you got P M I A P M I A P M I A really kind of good one to get down and definitely challenging having to use four different digits as opposed to uh, three different digits so knocking it down to three different digits you get a very familiar banjo roll which almost anybody can do and it is thumb on the G string as usual, what you would expect, index finger on the E string, just like normal, thumb on the C string, which is kind of like Travis picking a little bit, uh, Travis picking like uh, Merle Travis did and Chad Atkins and Tommy Emanuel and all those folks on the guitar. You can uh, Google that, look up uh, those two words, Travis picking, and you'll learn all about it. But again, thumb on the G, index on the E, thumb on the C, and finally, middle on the A. Big difference there between using your middle on the A and your ring on the A. You'll see it feels different. So my original way that's in the book, P M I A, and then the alternative way which you might find a little bit simpler, P I P M, P I P M. to me feels easy. That's something natural and intuitive and I don't even have to think anymore uh, when I play that. But this one decidedly is much harder. P M I A. Only one note with the thumb. All right so that is the pattern and the chords are straight ahead. Like I said you got an A minor to an F. A sort of melancholy almost uh, film music uh, type sounding chord progression. David Bowie's Space Oddity also uses something similar to that. And then I brighten it up with our uh, D minor to G7, which is a 2-5 in the key of C for you music theory uh, folks. Have repeat signs. It's uh, intended that every four bars repeats except for uh, the end, which I don't have a repeat sign back there. So yeah, if you can observe those repeat signs, you get more practice, you get more exercise. It's worth doing uh, each section twice. 
but then that D minor to G7 thing, it speeds up. And obviously you can see a technical problem there. You are picking your G7, but you can't leave your G7 too early to get to the D minor or you shorten that note, you make that note cut off. So make sure you practice that slow first. To get that clean chord change and don't speed it up until you're you're able to do it slow or else it'll sound like this you'll get too short of a note out of that I have to be really conscious about that myself I have to uh, purposely practice it slow and build up my speed so that's uh, probably the um, most difficult part of this it's not hard chords D minor to G7 but going that fast and then also having um, your finger picking reveal each and every little thing. So if there's a flaw in your playing, if there's something that you're not executing cleanly, it's going to come out um, especially, uh, it's just going to be more prominent when you finger pick because you're hearing each little event. Anything that's not clean, there's a lot of room for error there. So you go too fast. Hear that? Hear that very short note there? That's what we're trying to avoid. So if I were to point out the one spot in this etude that would challenge even fairly advanced players, um, that would be it. And then just finally we get to a beautiful peaceful C major 7 chord to an F chord. Then I have retardando, slow down gradually on C major 7. Finally, that high C chord at the seventh fret, which is a nice one to know if you don't already know it. Zero, 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 seven. Nice alternative to our zero, 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 three that is usually everybody's first chord on the uke. Um, I do have a DSL coda. If you want to, uh, you can go back. There isn't actually a S. There isn't a sign. I um, may or may not edit that out. We'll see when I do the second edition of this book. I might eliminate that DSL coda. But if you want to, just kind of um, go back to the top at that point and repeat the whole thing for some extra practice. But it's optional. If you want to end the piece there, it's fine. It's a pretty natural ending. So yeah, these are flexible. You can do whatever you want with them. If you want to change the chords too, if you want to make more interesting chords, go for it. There's a lot of possibilities. All right, ukulele people, hope you enjoyed that. I will leave a link below so you can find it on Amazon. It's ukulele uh, finger style etudes, and I really uh, enjoy um, teaching these to you, and I'll be coming out with more. I have two more volumes planned, so this is a series. This is like the first of three. This is volume one, and uh, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like. Be sure to click that notify bell, and I will catch you later, ukulele people. Bye-bye.